Even if you live in the Midwest, you can be a global firm, a global technology firm reaching all around the world. It's possible to do and it's possible to succeed. You can grow your business 150%. <coughs> My name is Lynn Hinderocker. Welcome to Next Biz Success. I'm going to introduce you today to a gentleman named Gene Beckman. He runs a firm called Management Communication Services out of the Omaha, Nebraska area. Gene, welcome to Next Biz Success. It's good to be here with you, Lynn. You have a firm that you started, a technology management firm. You manage, what, te telecommunications networks, essentially? Is that what your organization is? Basically, does? it's uh, providing hardware and software solutions that help people manage their communication systems, computing and networking. Yeah, now you kind of play that down, but you, you really were on the cusp of the technology boom way back in the mid and late 80s, were you not? Right, I left the uh, education career that I had and start, uh, started to work for a firm that was selling new technologies in a three-state area. Uh -huh. Worked for them for about So you were years. a rep, basically. Basically a sales rep. Uh -huh carrying the bag with the number of different uh, products in it. Sure, sure. And uh, just trying to uh, learn more about why people buy the technology that they do. And how to deploy it appropriately. And how to deploy it, make it fit their business and their uh, technical fits. Yes, now we, we got to step back. You came out of college with a marketing uh, uh, orientation, but right. you kind of fell into the world of academics. Now how in the world does a guy <laughs> go from the world of college and managing uh, services in, in an academic environment and end up being a global entrepreneur. Well, it's, uh, it happened so fast you didn't even see it coming. Oh, but, I don't uh, believe that. The first uh, 17 years of education were basically started because I needed a job close to where my wife could finish school as well as sure. I just got my degree. So I started as a business manager and I stayed in that and thought that that was going to be my career forever and enjoyed the work and everything. But in the early 80s, when there was the divestiture of the communication systems, yes. breakup of AT&T and the sure. baby bells, and then also the emergence of the PC industry, distributed computing, you could see that the information technology boom was going to happen. Now, let me interrupt um, you real quick here, because there are many entrepreneurs, small business people, people who want to do something like you've done, and they're watching our, our interview here, and they're wondering, what's the next big thing? How did this guy figure out that this was the, the way that he needed to ride and, and, and ride it correctly and appropriately. Can you give us some advice about that in terms of staying abreast of this, not falling too far behind or getting too far ahead? Sure. I guess uh, I wanted to uh, find something that was practical. Yes. I wanted to find something that was cutting edge. I wanted to have fun. And that's what uh, my fun was to put as much value inside of me of understanding that technology, understanding who the players are, and how the businesses are using uh, right, the technologies. Right. And then uh, uh, the more fun to me is moving them to the decision of going on to the next technology. If you go to- Next wave and the next, next wave, wave. Next wave, yeah, next just wave. Just keep riding it. Right. Now, now your firm does about 20 million in revenues, or estimated Correct. to be doing that globally. Right. That's a big company uh, uh, anywhere, but in the Midwest, I mean, that's a, that's a sizable firm. Sure. But half of your revenues are overseas, is that that's correct? That's right. We and do about 10 million. How'd you million. pull that off? <laughs> we, uh, first of all, let me step back. We uh, negotiate contracts with ex uh, to get exclusivity or almost exclusivity so that we know that we have a vendor or a provider of that technology who would be relying upon us. Okay, so you have manufacturers that, that sign exclusive deals with you or correct. close to that. As close to it as we can get it. Okay. So what we didn't want to do was to fight with everybody else for the business and step over, over each other. And right. Get out of the usual channel management problems. Right, right, right. And what we were doing in the U.S. worked. We thought we could do it in Europe and we thought we could uh, do it in a way that would help this uh, te technology take off faster. So we. Uh, made a proposal to the contractor, or to the vendor, saying, uh, we'll take uh, Europe for you, we'll establish the resellers, we'll be provide the back office, okay. and uh, we'll coordinate the uh, sales process. Now, i got to inter interrupt you here, because although you're a credible guy, and you have background, and all this stuff, it still seems like a leap. If I were a manufacturer, say, what do you know about selling in Western <laughs> Europe? And or, that's what everybody said in the Silicon Valley, you almost had to move to the valet to be able to get people to believe you that you were really in technology and uh, movable. But then, what did I did you have connections in Europe, by the way, before you went no. to the manufacturer? No, you did didn't. not. We did not. So you were able to instill confidence, no. but you didn't really have any a sales no. force deployed yet. I knew from previous relationships how they were doing business over there okay. in Europe right. from All different right. technologies that were brought in there. But no, we look for people who are like us because it worked for us. Uh -huh. We look for people who wanted to be like us, how we were doing it in the U.S. And surprisingly, there are people over there in every country 
that were looking to be like us. Okay. So within uh, a matter of about six months, we had identified and enabled uh, six contracts, and I think we have something like ten of them now. So we're in ten different countries okay. doing it. And uh, we, in the first year of doing it, hit our quota about six months into it. And in the second year, we did it, uh, that quota, which doubled uh, okay. that much quicker also. We did it in the first three months of So the you year. got some leverage and then you just kept creating some momentum. Right. Now, I have a lot of questions to ask you here quickly. How do you find people, number one? You don't run want ads, I don't think. And, and How do you find people that want to be part of your, are they commission people? How, how do you get this worldwide network of people pushing out your exclusive offerings. Uh, That's, I don't get well, that. Well, we noticed in the industry is that there's uh, a, a number, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. We're also riding the wave of the internet and the, uh, everything is local communication. Think globally, act locally. So you position your representatives yeah. as entrepreneurs? Oh yes, very okay. much so. We want them to be All entrepreneurial. Right. We, we look for the people that have 15, 20 plus years of experience. They're uh, experienced in the areas where we know we are. But maybe so selling for IBM or people correct. like that around the country. Yeah. Okay, all yeah. right. So we find who their uh, customers are, if we can, in, ah. when we're negotiating with them. Because uh, we want to hit the technology into the market with the right customers and create that hockey stick of growth uh, right. very quickly. Right. So that, right. Um, yeah, that's okay. how we do it. Now, Gene, let me ask you this. I know as any entrepreneur, you have a passionate sense of what you're trying to achieve, and you have certain values you embrace and espouse, and try to keep all these people that are far flung around the globe. How do you motivate them, and how do you get them to really buy in and articulate your vision, and, and so your company doesn't get all fragmented and doesn't stand for anything? Yeah, that's a work in process, and uh, it will be forever. But uh, mm -hmm. one of the things is to communicate very well, to give very high level, um, types of measurements uh -huh. that aren't uh, critical measurements, of, but you create the comp competition between the goals instead of between the people or who's favorite. So you're not having the reps compete with each other, no. but versus plans. Right. Do you use webinars and stuff like that? Oh, or? yes, we use a lot of webinars. Almost everything is webinars. We travel to Europe only about uh, 10 days a month okay. to be able to do this, and um, the rest, and that's one person going over there, and we send over a trainer. Uh, so there is a face-to-face -face interface. Oh, yes, there's much to keep of that. That, that has to be in there. Yeah. Well, Gene Beckman with Management Communication Services, it's fascinating to me. You've been, you've been riding this tech wave. You grow globally. You're communicating all over the world, and you've got large clients around the world. It's a, it really is the ideal that many wannabe technology entrepreneurs are, are aspiring to do this. So thanks for sharing your, your secrets and your insights. We appreciate it very Thank much. Thank you, Lynn. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. This is Next Biz Success. You can succeed as a global entrepreneur right from the heartland. It can be done. It's being done. Thanks for watching. Keep on going. Keep on growing.